Blake, congratulations on establishing the first supersonic airline factory in the United States. Can you tell us a little bit more about the factory and what it represents for Boom Supersonic and the aerospace industry? Well, the really exciting thing is Supersonic is coming back and it's going to be bigger than it's ever been before. You know, as we know, we only had 14 Concords that ever entered service, but we've already sold about 130 overtures and that's just scratching the surface. So we're going to build a lot of Supersonic airplanes and that's what we're doing in Greensboro, North Carolina. Our first factory is designed to do 33 Supersonic airplanes per year and we've got space to build two or maybe three total assembly lines so we can get up to 100 airplanes per year. And how how will the new factory enhance Boom Supersonic's capabilities in developing and producing the Overture Supersonic airliner? It's going to be a state-of-the-art factory uh, designed to be able to produce 33 airplanes per year, each built to the highest standards of quality and safety, and going to be tested thoroughly before we hand them over to our global airline customers like United, American, and Japan Airlines. Sustainability, jet zero, is a key term and a significant concern in aviation. So how is Boom addressing environmental considerations with the Overture aircraft? It's something we think a lot about because we, we believe in a future in which more people can go more places more often. And that's really the purpose of supersonic flight is to break not just the sound barrier, but really the travel barrier so that we can vacation on the other side of the planet, do business anywhere in the world, and maybe even change who we fall in love with. So if we want to be able to fly a lot more, those flights need to be not just affordable, fast, they also need to be sustainable. And so we think about that from a couple different aspects. One is about community impact. So we're designing this airplane to be as quiet as the latest generation subsonic airplanes. So when you hear that supersonic services come into your local airport, you can be excited, not worried your windows are going to rattle like they would with a military supersonic jet. And then there's also the carbon question. And we are designing Overture around 100% sustainable aviation fuel. If you don't know about SAF, this is the way that long haul aviation is decarbonizing. It needs to scale, it needs to come down in cost. But today's airplanes can really only run about 50 50 SAF. Overture with our Symphony engine can do 100% sustainable fuel. So not only is the airplane twice as fast, it's also going to decarbonize twice as quickly. So looking ahead, what's your vision for the future of supersonic travel? We want to make all flights for all passengers supersonic. We're starting off with Overture 1, which is an all business class supersonic airliner. That means fares about three quarters less than what we're charged on Concorde, meaning this can be available to tens of millions of passengers. But we're already starting to look at Overture 2, Overture 3, and the ultimate goal is to make supersonic flight available to everybody who flies. Now, am I right in thinking that you actually had a test flight in March? That's right. The XB-1, which is our one-third scale prototype for Overture, the first ever independently developed supersonic jet and the first new supersonic civil airplane since Concorde, flew March 22nd. Very successful first flight. We've been working some tweaks based on what we learned from that flight, and we're expecting to be back in the air if the weather is good, actually tomorrow. Blake, over your shoulder are some very impressive stats. I just read London to Barbados in 4 hours 20. Tell us more. Well, there are going to be about 600 routes on the planet that are going to benefit from speed on Overture, where there is a significant speed up for passengers and profitable operation for airlines. So think about crossing the Atlantic in about three and a half hours. Think about crossing the Pacific. Uh, Tokyo, Seattle is four and a half hours. And some of the most painfully long flights in the world today, like Los Angeles to Sydney that today stretches for almost 15 hours, we'll be able to do that in about eight and a half. And you think that this could happen commercially so I could be on a flight like that within the next 15 years? Oh, I'd like to think you'd be on it in the next five years. So Overture 1 is five years out. That's all business class. Think another five years for premium economy, another five years beyond that for economy. So all passengers kind of going one class at a time. And just like every other technology, it starts at a little bit more expensive price point. But then as we scale and we innovate and we improve efficiency, the cost comes down over time. And we're going to do that as quickly as we can, just without skipping any steps. What's been the benefit of having your beautiful chalet here at the Farnborough International Air Show? 
Uh, well, this is the place to be in aerospace. Uh, for three days a year, uh, the entire industry is here, and we can accomplish about a, a year's worth of business all in one place. And one of the reasons that, that we come is uh, it's a chance really to make what we're doing tangible. Not everybody can come to the Mojave Desert and see our test airplane fly, but we can bring it here to Farnborough and show it with our partners, our customers, our regulators, and let everyone get a sense of the future that's coming. Very excited about it. Thank you so much.